Our next guest uh, is a very odd and a very funny person. He can currently be seen in a motion, motion picture called Bad Medicine. Uh, I think you're in for a real treat here. Please welcome Gilbert Gottfried. Gilbert. <laughs> Oh, that was wonderful. Oh, that, ah, oh, what a beautiful crowd. What a wonderful audience. Oh, you're a beautiful crowd. I love you. I'd like to take you home with me. I'd like to see you all naked. I'd like to beat you. I'd like to humiliate you. I'd like to hang each one of you naked by your ankles and smear cheese all over your body. I'd like it, I'd like it to be, I'd like it to be tepid cheese. Not even hot or cold. See, hot and cold your body reacts to. Tepid, you be got ugh, there's something tepid on me. It's tepid. Get this tepid there. They smeared something tepid on me. I'd like, I'd like it to be the kind of cheese you find only at parties. The kind of cheese where you didn't eat all day because you thought there'd be food at the party. You had millions of opportunities to eat all day. Everyone was offering you food. They said, here, have a nice steak. No, I can't. I'm going to a party. There'll be so much food there. Well, would you like a pizza? For... No, no, I can't. I can't. I'm going to... There's food from the door to the window. Food. All they have is food. Will there be women at this? No, no, no. It's food. How would you like some organically grown berries? No, no, I can't. I can't. Too filling. It's way too filling. And then you walk into the party, and there in front of you is a wedge of cheese. And it's, it's, like, it's like soft and yellow on the inside and hard black wax on the outside. And it's like you're never quite sure if you should eat the hard black wax. It's like because you figure, well, if I eat the hard black wax, people are going to, you know, maybe I should just eat the yellow part and throw away the hard black wax. Then you do that, you throw it away, and they go, He's, yeah, why didn't you eat the hard black wax? Dad, it's the most nutritious part of the cheese. Eat the hard black wax. Or you can eat the hard black wax, and then you run into the risk that people are going to be looking at you going, there's someone over there eating the hard black wax. He's eating the... Don't, don't, don't look now. Don't look now. Don't look now. Just go act like you're getting a drink and then take a look. Well, okay, I'll act like, well, I think I'll have a martini now. He's eating the hot black wax! Oh, my God! He ate it! I think he swallowed it. I think it, no, you're kidding me now. No, he did. He swallowed it. True story. <laughs> that happened. That happened. It's true. Today, I woke up. I waited 15 minutes before a Stephen King novel came out. <laughs> I was worried. I called him up. I went, Steve, Steve. I have one of those phones that goes flat against your face. <laughs> Steve. My uncle died recently. I put him in a mausoleum. If I keep him there for six months, I can get a toaster. <laughs> Can't wait for my aunt to die. Got my eye on a clock radio. Once, I was walking through the country, and I looked up in the sky, and there was a bolt of lightning, and a strange alien ship landed in the middle of the field. And the latches opened up, and greenish-gray creatures emerged from the ship. They surrounded me, staring at me with their unblinking red orbs. And finally, one of them spoke and said, Ben Gazar is a good actor. Why can't he get a series? <laughs> this for a while and I said I don't know I can't help you they're very small I don't know I can't stay together in a group is that the only reason you came down here yeah this is not enough but they said they yell a lot they're very annoying Jackie Gleason in Casablanca you're getting on that plane with Vic Laszlo. Oh, you're getting on that plane, all right. And I know that you know that I know that you're getting on that plane. <laughs> Ellen.
Elmer Fudd in Apocalypse Now. Oh, the horror. The horror. Now, James Mason as Ralph Cramden. Alice, Norton and I are going bowling. Richard Burton as Norton. I can't go bowling with you, Ralph. Shixie's mother is coming over. <laughs> Jack Nicholson as Alice. You can't go bowling, Ralph. <laughs> oh, how I wish these bits had endings. <laughs> Why don't I come up with an ending for a bit? You never do, do you? Well, that's it. Have a seat. Uh, we'll do a commercial, then we'll be back with Gilbert Godfrey. Nice to oh, see you. Stop it. How have you been? What have you been doing lately? Oh, me. Glad you asked. <laughs> well, lately I've been breaking in this suit for Norman Fell. <laughs> uh, he called me, he said, and I said, Norman, if you want it, you got it. <laughs> I, uh, you know, Gandhi was a strange fella. Uh -huh. Gandhi was a wacky guy. I once, uh, Gandhi once wrote a book called Hi, I'm Gandhi. <laughs> <laughs> There's him on the cover like this, uh -huh. you know, in a tweed jacket. Kind of an introductory yes, piece. Yes, uh -huh. and I, I once said to him, you know, Gandhi, and he goes, please, Mahatma. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I went, Hadi, uh -huh. shave your head and don't eat. Uh -huh. That was my advice. They, you know, Herman Melville once came to me and said, I'm writing a book called Moby Dick. It's about a guy in a boat. You think it needs something? <laughs> <laughs> a fish, an animal, would make it more cheerful. All in all, uh, you know, but I'll tell you something. I want to tell you something about a nuclear holocaust. You think it's hard to get a cab now. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, that would be tough, wouldn't it? That, oh, would it be tough? Yeah, do, do me uh, one uh, quick... Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> one little uh, of... Uh, some more of uh, Ralph Cramden in, uh, in uh, uh, Casablanca. Let me hear just one... two seconds of it. A little more. A reprise. A reprise? Yeah. Oh, do I have to? <laughs> See, I know how to... I know how to get the All right, wait, wait a minute. We got time for this? Yeah. Uh, okay, quickly. Here, Gilbert, do this for us, and we'll, we'll love it. Ilsa! <laughs> what we had, we left in Paris. <laughs> We're never gonna lose that, Ilsa! <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Gilbert. We'll be right back. <laughs> My thanks to everybody who was here tonight, Gilbert Gottfried, of course, and uh, Tom Selleck. My apologies to Mayor Anthony Cucci from uh, Jersey City. We'll have him on as soon as we possibly can. Have a good weekend, folks, and a nice New Year. Bye-bye. <laughs>
one by one and squeeze you and then mash you up all together and just like mush you up and let you drip through my fingers and, and mush you into a nice little ball and bounce you around and keep you inside a little plastic egg when I'm through playing with you. And then take you out when the Sunday news arrives and press you on pictures of Dick Tracy. And then lift it up and make his face get wide and long and wide and long and just... And eventually, when I get tired of you, I'll let you fall behind the radiator with my dead turtle. Because he's dead and that's it. He's dead. He's a dead turtle. That's it. My turtle is dead. Now, a lot of you would say, well, you sure he's dead? Yes. Yes. He's a dead turtle. It's nothing. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to hold a mirror under his nose. He fell behind the radiator. He dried up. He lost his moisture. There is no more moisture there. He's not a moist turtle anymore. When a turtle is not moist, it's not anything. Kierkegaard said that. He was one of his early, uh, I think. He said it's not moist. He lost a turtle without moisture. It's, it's like a paperweight with nostrils. It's a, it's a meaningless object. It's just it's all a turtle has is it. You go to a pet store. You go, can I have a moist animal, please? Well, we. We have several damp animals. Uh, no, I want a moist animal. Well, we, uh, can I interest you in a wet animal? No, I'd like a moist animal, please. I, I wouldn't have a moist. And then you get it, you get a turtle. You put him inside a tank with a little snap-in palm tree and day glow pebbles and a little staircase that leads up to the snap-in palm tree because God knows a staircase is very important to a turtle. <laughs> It's the first thing a turtle can ask for is a staircase. You, you know, you take a turtle, you put him in the tank, and goes, where is the staircase? What is this? I want a staircase. How am I going to get up to the snapping palm tree without a staircase? Once I got a turtle, I put him into the tank with no staircase. He stayed up the whole night standing on two legs going, Damn you! Damn you! He's a very melodramatic uh, turtle, you know. Just, Damn you! See, I thought it going for a third time. What the hell? And but I gave him it. I gave him the staff and punchy, the dago pebbles, the staircase, and he tried to escape. He would always he tried to escape. He'd fall to the ground and go, "Where are you going? Where is a turtle in a hurry to get to?" And I'd pick him up, I'd put him back in a tank, and I'd go, don't try to escape. And he'd, he'd give me that typical turtle, yeah, 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 that typical uh, turtle answer. Yeah, 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 no, no, I'm not gonna, yeah, yeah. And then he tried to escape, he fell behind the radiator, and he dried out. He dried out, lost his moisture, dried out. I tried to put my hand under there to get him, but it's disgusting under there. It's like, it's like dust and dead bugs, and it's like, ugh. And I, I tried with a broom, but you know, you can't. There's nothing to hook around with a broom. It, the broom's not curved or anything. So you, you push it under the radiator, and it's, you wind up pushing them further back, and then knocking them from one side to the other. It's, it's like playing pool with a dead turtle. It's like, you know, you're just hitting this disgusting, uh, it's not even green anymore. It's like a grayish, brownish, unmoist color. And, uh, you know, I called Carl Sagan up. I, I said, hello, Carl, because I often talk into my pinky when I'm on the phone. I said, hello, Carl, there's a dead turtle under my radiator. He said, you try with a broom? And I said, yes, Carl, yes, Carl, I did. And he said, it's sort of like playing pool, isn't it? And I said, bingo, Carl, bingo. Bingo, Carl was a famous musical comedy about Carl Marx. Ah, uh, bingo call, Norman Fell played him. It's a long story. I, I wouldn't worry about it. But you know, just, uh, just the other day I was talking to Kurt Voltheim. I was in Austria. I figured I'd stop in and say hi. So he said to me, you know, uh, Kurt said this to me. He said, you know, a few years ago I was in Germany and uh, me and my wife were having our picture taken. Well, who walks next to us right as the picture's being taken? Adolf Hitler. Boy, go figure the chances of that happening. I didn't even know this guy. The one time I have a picture taken, Hitler walks into it. And, uh... 
it's, it's like, and then they, they need my picture for the paper. What photo do they use? The one with him, naturally. Naturally. That's the one they use. Naturally. Naturally. Oh, naturally. You know, I was in Canada recently. It's, it's like another country. It's, uh... <laughs> It's, it's like, it's like you got on a plane and went somewhere else. It's, uh, you got, and it's, 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 they make maple syrup 24 hours a day there. It's a maple syrup country. It's, they live off maple syrup. You get off the plane, they go, well, long flight? I suppose you'll be wanting your maple syrup now. Ah, uh, how would you like your maple syrup? Little jars of maple syrup, perhaps? Well, no, I'd like a hotel. How would you like a big bath? Of maple syrup. Well, no, I uh, just uh, place there, put my luggage. Would you like little jars of maple syrup with Northwest Mounted Police that you squeeze it and it squirts out of the head? <laughs> just tell us how you want your maple syrup. That's all we need to know. Because years ago, Canadians were walking through the forest and they saw a tree that had goo dripping out of it. And they said there's some weird, disgusting goo dripping out of that tree. Let's eat it! Thank you very much, Gilbert. Oh, it's a magic night for America, isn't it? Thank you, everybody. Good night. Our uh, next guest is a very funny gentleman who appears regularly on MTV. Turns out they are still on the air, Paul. MTV, they're still on the air. Uh, he can also be seen this spring on his own Cinemax special called the Gilbert Greetings from Gilbert Gottfried. I'm sorry. Please welcome comedian Gilbert Gottfried. must be for you. Oh, what a thrill this must be for all of you. I, I envy you. I envy you that you came in off the street, sat down, and you can look at me. What? Oh, how I envy your life at this moment. How, what I wouldn't give to trade places with you, that you could sit in a chair and look at me. It's just amazing. It's just amazing. You know, last night I was having dinner with Charles Manson, and in the middle of dinner, he turned to me and said, Is it hot in here or am I crazy? <laughs> he said that. That's, that's him. That's him. That's him. That's him. He said that. I don't know how many of you are old enough to remember Ike and Tina Turner, but um, Tina Turner used to be partners with Eisenhower. And it used to be, you know, Eisenhower and Tina Turner. And many a time, I would walk into the Oval Office of the White House, and there would be President Eisenhower, drunk out of his mind, beating up Tina Turner. And I'd go, Mr. President! Mr. President, stop beating up this muscular woman with the wig! Leave the muscular woman with the wig alone! And uh, he would like, he'd look up at me and go, look, I'm, I'm bald and I'm the president, what do I know? Because that was the type of guy he was. He was bald and he was the president. He was two things, bald and he was the president. Yes, yes, two of them. Now, Tony Curtis talking to Gavin McLeod. <laughs> Hi, Gavin. Hi, Tony. Want some coffee? Okay. Donuts with that? Yeah. Got the voice down pat. Stop it, only if you feel it in your heart. I was on a camping trip recently, and I got separated from my party, and I wandered through the forest, and all of a sudden I came upon a clearing, and I looked up, and there was a big sign that said, warning, you have entered the land of the three-named people. 
I was about to turn and run when Jan Michael Vincent jumped in front of me. I said, this is the land of the three name people. How many names do you have? And then I was turned the other way and Philip Michael Thomas jumped in front of me. I said, this is the land of the three name people. How many names do you have? And I tried to run and Jean Paul Belmondo said, how many names do you have? And I said, I have but two names. And at that point, Olivia Newton-John and Ray Dawn Chong jumped out and said death to the two-name boy. And then Mary Tyler Moore and Ava Marie Saint came out screaming death to the two-name boy. And then Ricky Lee Jones, Tommy Lee Jones, Jamie Lee Curtis, Roscoe Lee Brown, and David Lee Roth came out <laughs> screaming death to the two-name boy. And then just about everybody from the Cosby Show came out. <laughs> screaming death to the two-name boy. So I pulled myself away and I ran and ran and ran and ran and ran. So you ran quite a bit. I ran and ran and ran for days and days and days. So over a week, days and days and days. And I dovened while I ran. And, uh, and then I collapsed. And when I woke up, there was a girl standing over me. And I said, what's your name, young wench? And she said, Madonna. And I said, you only have one name? I have two. And at that point, Prince came out. And Sade, and Sting, and Apollonia, and Vanity, and Contafloss, and Topol. And they said, we will make you our king, two-name boy. From the land of the one name, the two-name boy shall rule. And we danced and celebrated and danced and celebrated. And then I collapsed, because it was a long week. And uh, when I woke up, E.G. Marshall, F. Scott Fitzgerald, Michael J. Fox, and George C. Scott came out and said, death to the man without the pretentious initial. That's it. Was the place full, Paul, Madison Square Garden? Yeah, I think it was Like 18,000, yeah. 20,000 people? Yeah, yeah, Damn. full house. Well, thanks again. Pal. I don't have your private number. You, yeah. you, yeah. It was just right. a spontaneous yeah, right. thing. Yeah, when, when I'm at the garden, you're not coming. <laughs> when I go up on stage to sit in with who? Yeah. Like, who might I be sitting in with? Yeah, I, you're not coming. <laughs> sit in with Bill Cos. Our next guest is a... Uh, <laughs> I'll be there. Oh, fine. Mock me. In. Mock me while no, I'm no, introducing no, no. our next guest. I will sneak in. Our next guest is a strange and uh, funny comedian, and he certainly is strange and also very funny. Just what I said. He can be seen in the motion picture Beverly Hills Cop 2 and in his own Cinemax special, which I, I also have seen, which is very entertaining. Uh, please welcome, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Gilbert Gottfried. <laughs> It's just, it's, it's harmful kindness already. Stop it, stop. It's like, here's kindness and you went right past it. Just stop it. It's, it's too much already. Well, yeah, well, you're a beautiful crowd. I love you, you're dynamite. You're beautiful. You know, uh, who came up with the idea for Hogan's Heroes? Who sold Hogan's Heroes to a network? Who went into a television network one day and said, here's the idea. It's a group of American soldiers held in a Nazi prison camp. It's a comedy. <laughs> well, tell me more. Well, okay. You see, they're held by the Nazis. They try to escape. And if they ever get try, try to get over the fence, the Nazis will kill them. I love it. <laughs> Give me 13 episodes. True. Could have happened. I don't say it didn't. I say it could have. You know, Herman Melville once came up to me and he said, I'm writing a book called Moby Dick. Do you think it needs something? And I said, offhand, a whale. Put a whale in it. 
And he goes, wait, wait, wait. So in other words, I, I wrote a nice story about a guy in a boat, and you're telling me a whale? And I said, yeah, put a whale in it. I said, you see, they're after one whale. And he goes, what one whale? How can they find one whale in the ocean? And I said, look, 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 trust me. They're after one. So he goes, so in, in the other words, in the entire ocean, there's one whale that they're looking for. And uh, I said, yeah, as you see, it's a one-legged sea captain who's after the whale. So he goes, how did he lose his leg? Tell me how he lost his leg. And I went, well, um, the whale bit it off. <laughs> and he goes, so, okay, okay. In other words, this guy falls into the water and a whale with a mouth this big <laughs> finds a little man that's that small in front of him and he just goes up and he, like, nips one leg off. He just swims around and he nibbles one leg off. He just sees the tire and nibbles it right off. And I, I said, yeah, yeah. And basically he goes, so I said, he, so in other words, this whale has a mouth the size of LaGuardia Airport. <laughs> and he sees a little man the size of a Rice Krispie. <laughs> and he just nibbles it off. He, he goes around, he nibbles it. The little teeth thing, nibbles it right off. He, like a tiny little speck. And he decides to take one little, I guess he just wasn't that hungry that day. <laughs> Because I guess he figured he's swimming around, I'm not that hungry, I'll just take that one little leg off there. And then, how does he get back to the boat? And I said, well, he swims back. And he goes, so, oh, oh, okay, okay. So in other words, a whale rips his leg off and this guy can swim back to the boat. So he swims back with one leg and then the sailors, who don't even have a third grade education, are able to perform microsurgery on him and save his life. And I said, well, granted, there are a few ticks that could be ironed out. I, I admit that, I admit it. You know, I was, uh, I was talking to the elephant man the other day. And uh, the elephant man turned to me and said, does everybody have a head the size of Detroit or is it just me? And I said, there you go, putting everything into your looks. Everything you think that everything is your looks. It's not, you know, women do not care about a man's looks. If you read any sex quiz, they care about a personality and a sense of humor. Women love a sense of humor. Women would trample over Tom Selleck to get to Buddy Hackett. <laughs> they, they love a sense of humor. That's it, that's it for women. They just absolutely love a sense of humor. Women stay awake at night dreaming about the Three Stooges. <laughs> women tear at their nightgowns in passion and yell, <laughs> That's it. Right. We're going to do a commercial. We'll be right back here with Gilbert. Okay. Nice to have you back. Things are going pretty well for you, aren't they? Oh, you, yeah. You get yeah. your uh, Cinemax show, which yes. is great. Yes. And you're in uh, Beverly Hills Cop 2. Were, yeah. you, were you in the first Beverly Hills Cop no, movie? No, no. Yeah. Just two. I worked with Eddie Murphy in Beverly Hills Cop 2, and I came back. I did the Cosby show. I'm at a point in my career where no white person will work with me. It's basically, <laughs> it's just, it's just bla basically black people hire me as their funny Jew. It's, uh, <laughs> you, you, uh, you were on the Cosby show? Yes, yes. Yeah, and what did yes. you do? You just... Well, uh, yeah, well, I'm like, uh, like a more decent Lisa Bonet, I guess. I, uh, you know, you were I'm like somebody... a what? Yes, I'm a well-dressed Lisa Bonet. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, yes. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let's take a look at you in uh, Beverly Hills Cop 2. Oh, you have a clip. Hey, aren't you surprised they made a sequel out of that first one? Yeah, it's amazing. The first <laughs> one didn't do that good. It's in, it's in Kmart for a uh, 35 cent ride. Okay, what do, you, what, what do you play in the film? Uh, I play a loud, irritating Jew, which is a stretch for me. <laughs> All right. It was up between me and Daryl Hannah. Okay, here's Gilbert Gottfried in uh, Beverly Hills Cop 2. Do you own a black Mercedes-Benz license plate number CRL 507? 507? That's my wife's car. That's not my car. That's my wife's car. Yeah, I mean, tickets. it's under my name, but it's my wife's car. No, no, no. Bitch! So you have 25 unpaid parking tickets, and it's your car, so we have to take you in. Wait a second. I've got an idea. 
Is there something that I have in this office that I could hand to you and that would make you kind of forget that you're holding those uh, little pink tickets there? Oh, you mean like if I had um, $200 in his hand? Ouch! Let go of my arm! $200! Ouch! Please! I'm robbing you! That's what I'm doing. Here's one, here's two, they're real crisp. Very nice. Do you, do you go to jail? Do they take you in or not? Oh, I'm giving away too much I already. See. Do, yeah. do a little of the impression that you always do when you come here. <laughs> at, at my personal request. Oh, your favorite? Is, is Jackie Gleason being done? It's Ralph Cramden yes. being done by who? Who is it? By uh, in Casablanca. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Ralph Cramden in Casablanca. Go ahead. <sighs> you're getting on that plane with Vic Laszlo. <laughs> oh, you're going to get on that plane, all right? <laughs> and I know that you know that I know that you're getting on that plane. Because <laughs> if you don't, you're going to regret it. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon, and for the rest of your life. <laughs> yes, sir. Gilbert, thanks for being here, buddy. Nice to see you again. No problem. All right, we got to do another one, then we'll be I right back. Else to do. <laughs> Back to the program, folks. Uh, Gilbert Gottfried is uh, just seconds away from coming out here, and also Bella Tabek, uh, the Hungarian animal trainer. Is that right? That's right. Tomorrow on the program, Fred Willard will be here, Stupid Petrix, and uh, Ray Davies. What are we going to hear tomorrow, Paul, with you and Ray Davies? A uh, little Ray Davies music tomorrow. What are you going to hear? Something from The Road, I believe. Is it The Road? Are you going to hear the, the Yeah, road? we're going to do The Road yeah. from the new... Yeah, what do they say about The Road, Paul? What is the important thing to remember about The Road? It's hard, hard, hard. Oh, no, 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 no. So hard. Some are survivors and some are debris. Hey, so you know the record then? Of course. Not exactly dealing with a chimp here. Well, we're very excited. <laughs> I'm really excited to have Ray Davies yeah, on tomorrow. Yeah, be pretty exciting. Uh, have I done all of that stuff? Yeah. All right. Uh, our next guest is a very funny and unusual young man who visits us here regularly. He uh, recently appeared on the big screen in Beverly Hills Cop Number 2. Folks, please say hello to Gilbert Gottfried. <laughs> Yourselves. Behave yourselves! Stop it! Stop it! You, 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 stop it! You're getting giddy. You're getting giddy. You're starting to get giddy. You're gonna get giddy. Next thing you know, you're gonna poke someone's eye out. You're gonna. That's that's the natural progression of things. First, you get a little excited, then you get giddy, then you poke somebody's eye out. It's like it, you poke it right. It's like I know a lot of you are probably saying, "So couldn't I just get a little bit giddy and tap someone on the eye?" No, no. You poke it right out. You're gonna poke it right. I know I've been in this situation before. I see it. They start getting a little giddy and they turn to whoever they're sitting next to, poke the eye right out. And then you say, well, could I slap them on the eye? Can I just kind of tap it? Just tap it. No, no, no. You're gonna poke it right out and then, you know, then try to say you're sorry. You can't say you're sorry, because, you know, after all, you take them out to dinner, you go, uh, boy, what did you think of that salad? Hey, what did you think of that eye, huh? Oh, stop it! Stop it! And I, hey, uh, did you see that girl? Uh, look at that eye that you knocked out! Oh. Because that's it. You knock a person's eye out. That's all they think about. You know, it's like, uh, you know, I mean, they, they don't care about you. I have no problems. I have no problems. Their eye is out. There. Nothing in my life is bad. It's true. It's very true. I, uh, I uh, spoke to God once. I said, hello, God, it's Gilbert. He said, that's so weird, I was just gonna call you. <laughs> Every one of these jokes was predicted by Nostradamus 400 years ago today. He also predicted Henry Winkler would have his own show. Back then, it was the 1400s, and people were going, Winkler? Chachi, I could see, but... Uh... <laughs> Not so much. Oh, Chachi, sure, Chachi. But Winkler, I don't think so. Oh, Chachi, and I said, but Winkler, I don't know. Uh, back in the 1400s, people used to walk around going, this is a long time ago. <laughs> so
Sometimes I'd sit and talk to Nostradamus, and he'd just stand there and go, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, no, no, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, and the other guy, yeah, 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 yeah. Once I went to the movies with Nostradamus, and I said, boy, what did you think of that ending? And he goes, what, you didn't see that coming? I, uh, I was at the Vatican recently. I was trying out their special buffet, you know, it's uh, $2.99 all you can eat, you can't really beat that. And I was talking to the Pope, and in the middle of the conversation, the Pope said to me, oh, that Kurt Waldheim. <laughs> I thought he looked familiar. He calls me up, he goes, hi, it's Kurt Waldheim. I figured Kurt Waldheim, the band lead, I didn't know. I thought, oh, Kurt Waldheim, the landlord from Three's Company. Which, which is the reason World War II went on for so long, is because American and English troops were constantly firebombing Norman Fell's house. They would surround Norman Fell's house and go, come on down, Waldheim! And he goes, it's me, Norman! And they go, prove to us you're Norman Fell! And he'd go, well, uh, Joyce DeWitt is a consummate professional. <laughs> and John Ritter has a likable vulnerability. <laughs> they go, uh, wait a second, men, he could have read that in TV Guide. <laughs> we don't know. We don't know. You, you can't. You can't. We don't know. You can't. <laughs> we don't know. David Brenner as Hamlet. To be or not to be? <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? To be or you ever have a question like that? You know. That's it. How you been? Hi. Uh, why you ask? Well, you're, uh, you're, uh, you're, you're uh, big time now. Yes, yes, you try. Films? Yeah, films. I, I've the, seen several. Your own uh, TV special? Yeah. Records? Oh, do you have a record? Yeah, any any decade now. Uh -huh. Do uh, do it for me again. Let okay. me hear it. Okay. Now, could it. this happen to be this uh, is it. Yes. Jackie Gleason in and Casablanca? Casablanca? That's right. <laughs> you're getting on that plane with Vic Laszlo. Oh, you're getting on that plane, all right. And I know that you know that I know that you're getting on that plane. But if you don't, you're going to regret it. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon and for the rest of your life. <laughs> The crowd pleaser. You can't go wrong. Do you have any other uh, Nostradamus predictions? Uh, yes, uh, Nostradamus made some predictions that were half right. Uh, he made one prediction that an actor would be in the White House, uh -huh. and uh, but he didn't predict Reagan. He thought it would be Ben Gazzara. <laughs> And he also, he made predictions that in the next decade, there would be a big movie and networks would make a series out of it. And there also might be a comedy series about a single mother and some precocious kids. Uh-huh. But, you know, I don't know if it'll come true. <laughs> you, uh, you, you I don't know. You always work with your uh, eyes closed. Yes, it's a thing I picked up from Helen Keller. <laughs> she, she said, look, if it works for you, fine. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, uh, you certainly... The Helen Keller joke. You, she, uh, I, I believe you're the first in six yes, years yes. To, to have done one on this show. Yes, but not necessarily <laughs> the last. Uh, yes. uh, you, <laughs> not necessarily. You certainly have a, a strange approach uh, to the world, a strange outlook. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was, uh, the world is, uh, I was watching, I was watching Donna Rice, uh, being interviewed by Barbara Walters recently, and she said that, uh, she asked her, did, did you actually sleep with Gary Hart? And she refused to answer it. Uh -huh. You know, so I just sat there and went, God, now we'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> we were so close. Why couldn't she answer it? <laughs> For the rest of my life, I'll be wondering about this. Yeah. Okay. Um... <laughs> What uh, what else do we have here? Do you, you want to plug anything? You got anything coming up? No, my career is over. <laughs> I, think, I, think. I don't even waste time. <laughs> All right. My career is totally over. Godfrey, gone. we'll be right back with you. <laughs>
How are you? Uh, tomorrow on the uh, program, oh, yet to come tonight, D.B. Sweeney will be here uh, from the uh, new motion picture, Eight Men Out. And uh, also Jerry Vale and Paul and the band. We're very excited about this. Moving, I'm uh, moving. Going to be very exciting, very inspirational. Uh, tomorrow on the program, Andrea Martin will be joining us. Actress uh, Teresa Russell will be here. And uh, Buckwheat Zydeco, that'll be tomorrow. Quite a show. And uh, we have the dates now for Jerry Vale's appearance as... Uh, Judge of the uh, Miss America pageant. 1979. 79. 1980. 1980. 81, he was suspended by the commissioner and was not a judge. No. And then came back in 82. He was suspended. Apparently so. I wonder why. I don't know. That's Infotainment. Wait, he seems to know what. what. Uh, our next guest. Not true. Our next guest is a uh, very strangely talented man uh, who many will remember from Beverly Hills Cop 2. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Gilbert Gottfried. <laughs> called Absolutely the Last Temptation of Christ. <laughs> and the last temptation of Christ, Jesus' revenge, the last temptation of Christ, and the temple of doom. You know, it's... <laughs> it's, you know, they had no idea. They just, you know, they didn't plan it that well. A lot of people are protesting the film because they said it wasn't that realistic, and I, I agree with them. Christ was a lot taller. <laughs> And, uh, I didn't think Defoe was a good choice for him. It, uh, I always thought Tony Franciosa. I personally, in fact, you know, people, if you look at the Old Testament, they describe how much he looked like Tony Franciosa. It, it's like many times back then, they would see Christ walking around, they go, look, it's Tony Franciosa! Tony! How come he's wearing a beard? Well, maybe he's directing. <laughs> Sometimes the actors take time off from acting and they go to their first love, directing. And then they grow a beard so they can go on the Merv Griffin show and talk about it. <laughs> it's true. It's very true. I wouldn't say that if I didn't mean it. It's true. It's so true. It's very true. And you'll have to excuse me if I seem a little distracted, but this... This whole Dan Quayle thing has gotten me upset. I'm real upset about this. Sorry, it's not you. It's this darn Dan Quayle thing. It's like his, the latest scandal about Dan Quayle is that he wanted to have sex with a Playboy playmate. Boy, what a nut! What kind of lunatic is this guy? Gee, uh, 
hamburger would taste good just about now. <laughs> you just can't trust him. He's a psycho. <laughs> I saw Barbara Walters interviewing Donna Rice uh, a while back, and Barbara Walters asked Donna Rice, did you sleep with Gary Hart? And she refused to answer. And I sat there with the rest of the United States going, gee, now we'll never know. <laughs> Good night. is a uh, very funny gentleman and a unique performer and uh, he's soon to be seen in the upcoming motion picture entitled Problem Child starring John Ritter. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to this show Gilbert Gottfried. <laughs> taken. So I gave someone the camera. I said, I'm going to stand by this fountain. Why don't you take a picture of me? So I'm standing there. Who goes walking down the street right as the picture's being taken? Adolf Hitler. <laughs> Go figure the chance of that happening. I want a nice picture to send home. Hitler's standing right next to me. Well, I don't want to be in a shot with Hitler. I don't even know the guy. So I figure, maybe I can catch the photographer's attention right before he takes the shot. So I look at him and I go, wait. <laughs> Don't take that picture. Wait. But they take the picture and that's the one they use. They use that one. They always tend to use that one. They have a tendency to use that one. The only reason human beings were given tongues is so they could say, that one. In medieval times, as torture, they would rip people's tongues out and go, okay, say, that one. Many of these people died of exhaustion. They had no exhaust left. They were exhaustless people. If you look up exhaust in the dictionary, it says, person or persons lacking exhaust. It's true. I named the group Def Leopard. They originally came to me, they said, we want to call ourselves the hearing impaired leopard. <laughs> and he, I beg your pardon, leopard. You know, many years ago, I wanted to open a prestigious jewelry store in the heart of Manhattan and call it Debbie Gibson. Then the minute my back was turned, my partners opened the store across the street, called it Tiffany, and drove me out of business. <laughs> Tony Curtis talking to Gavin McLeod. Hi, Gavin. Hi, Tony. How are you? I'm fine. Want some coffee? Okay. I think I'll have a donut. Okay, I'll have one too. <laughs> you will have two donuts? <laughs> no, I will have a donut same as yourself. <laughs> so you will have a donut that resembles me? <laughs> no.
No. I meant you are eating a donut and I shall have the same. So you will eat the same donut that I am eating? No. I meant although we are both eating two entirely different donuts. The very fact that they are both called donuts puts them in the same food group. Are you saying in much the same way a carrot and a tomato are in the same food group? Later, that same day. What then of the coconut? I mean it contains no cocoa and it is not in the nut family. All the more frightening because it did happen. Today, I woke up. I must have waited 15 minutes before a Stephen King novel came out. <laughs> I was worried. I called him up and, Steve, Steve, sometimes I have phone calls right into my hand. <laughs> Let me tell all of you something about a nuclear holocaust. You think it's hard to get a cab now. <laughs> Thank you. That's it. do a uh, commercial and then uh, we'll be right back here with uh, Jerry McKinnis. Let's uh, get right on with our uh, next guest. He is a uh, very strange, very funny young man, and he has been nominated for a coveted Ace Award for his Up All Night show and plays uh, a part in an upcoming film, Look Who's Talking To. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the program, Gilbert Gottfried. <laughs> stupid now. Stop it. You're gonna feel cheap and used afterwards. Well, yeah, yeah, beautiful crowd. Thank you. Thank you. I mean that sincerely. At what point in a famous actress's career does she go from being a world-respected Academy Award-winning actress to doing commercials telling the world that she has a bladder control problem? <laughs> when is that decision made? Who is it discussed with first? When do they go from being like world-respected Academy Award-winning actresses to being a woman who walks down the street who you go, oh, there's that actress that you can't invite to your house. <laughs> she comes to your house, just make sure she doesn't go on the carpet. <laughs> like any time she comes over to my house, I have to saran wrap all the furniture. <laughs> Like, oh, you're inviting her to your house now? You better put newspapers down right now. <laughs> like, I invited her over. She, I had a beautiful Persian carpet. She ruined it. <laughs> she just ruined it. I don't even think she has a diseased bladder. I think she just <laughs> likes doing it. <laughs> I think she's a sick woman, and that's how she gets her kicks. She just likes it. She likes to go to your house stand over a good rug and just let it loose. <laughs> like she's like, she just, I, sometimes I see her coming up the road with like a big glass of water. <laughs> like smiling as she's approaching my house. Then she'll purposely stand over the rug in a skirt and go, come on, shake my hand. <laughs> and I'll go, I'm not doing that. I'm not, I know you. No, shake my hand. Come on. No, you're standing over my rug. I'm not going to do that. Shake my hand. You think I do a thing like, shake my hand. And I go, all right. You shake it, and then she just lets it all go. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't pull her finger. <laughs> the worst mistake you can make. 
You know, just once, I'd like to hear a black person say, today I got on the elevator, there was a Jew standing there. I got so scared. <laughs> I don't know. I got on the elevator, I see the doors closed, I see a Jew there. I don't even think he lived in the building. <laughs> well, you have no idea how lucky you are. It's true. It's true. I was in Canada recently. It's like another country. <laughs> like you get off the plane and you're somewhere else. In Canada, they have everything written in both English and French. It's like if you go to the elevator, it has uh, elevator in both English and French. Like if they didn't have it in your language, you wouldn't know what it was. <laughs> You'd say, oh, you'll be standing there all day going, oh, look, it's one of those apartments on a rope. <laughs> the latest thing it gives you a feeling of traveling while staying at home and if you stay in a hotel and you ask for a wake up call first they wake you up in French and then in English like they just woke you up in French you wouldn't wake up <laughs> or if you did wake up then you'd be bragging to all your friends at work you know I didn't get my wake up call but strangely enough some French guy called me at exactly 8 o'clock in the morning <laughs> in France. <laughs> True, I don't. <laughs> Yesterday, I walked into a delicatessen and I said, I'm looking for a meat pate that you could spread on crackers and serve at parties. And just then, a container of chopped liver looked up at me and spoke and said, so what am I, Robert Redford? <laughs> I Hey, you know what happened over the weekend down in Washington, D.C.? Uh, they had the uh, annual White House Correspondents' Dinner, and what they do is they bring in a, a comedian, and uh, the, the president will tell jokes, and then the comedian has to get up, and he has to tell jokes. It was a wonderful night, and this year, the comedian was our friend Jimmy Kimmel. Did a great job, by the way. But he's, now that got us to thinking, wow, this thing goes way, way back. Who have been some of the comedians who have hosted the... Uh, <laughs> Correspondence dinner yeah. over the years that maybe we've forgotten about. So here now, take a look at uh, some of the past. Well, I think you'll find this fascinating. A man goes into a doctor's office, doctor examines him, finds out he has five penises. He says, that's amazing. How do your pants fit? He says, like a glove. <laughs> Like, like a glove, ladies and gentlemen. Like a glove. Here he is, right there. It's only me. Have you seen the new uh, outer space movie uh, called Gravity? Have you seen this? Uh, astronauts uh, up in space uh, working on the Hubble Space Telescope, and uh, one thing leads to another. There's some horseplay. Uh -huh. uh, there's some <laughs> pushing and shoving, uh, and yeah. the next thing you know, the, the kids are floating free in space, and well, there you go. Then oh, your movie oh. really begins. And uh, <laughs> have you seen the, the trailer, the promotional trailer for the movie Gravity? Take a look at this. The number one movie in America is Gravity. Critics are calling it awe-inspiring and frighteningly realistic. Starring Sandra Bullock, George Clooney, and Gilbert Gottfried as the moon. I can't even make an English muffin. Gravity, now playing. <laughs> Gravity. 